What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and the Kizuna Clash just went live. I just finished recording some of the clips for it and then we see this reveal on Twitter with a brand new Sugo Fest exclusive character that's going to be making their appearance uh, very very shortly actually. Surprisingly this is coming out very soon and I don't really understand why they're making this character come out at this very odd time. No one would have predicted that another Sugo Fest was going to be arriving pretty much during the middle of the Kizuna Clash, but this is for a special occasion, obviously, because we have the Halloween stuff, obviously, appearing very shortly, but here we have Corazon and Law, so this is pretty exciting, and I mean, this is a pretty cool looking character, and I know some people out there are going to be very, very excited to see some of this, but we'll just go ahead and play the special animation of this character, because it does look so, so cool, so the sprite for the character looks fantastic too, and quite obviously, this is theming around the Halloween celebration. So yeah, this Sugo Fest is actually going to be going live on the 21st of October, and it does end very soon. It ends around, I think it's like right on Halloween, which is interesting because it's only like a one week Sugo Fest essentially. So they're kind of just shoehorning this character in out of nowhere. Um, you can see here, yeah, October 21st, well, 25th to October 30th. So it really does beg the question, is there still going to be an end of batch um, you know, end of month batch coming out because they typically will, re you know, reveal a new batch at the end of the month moving forward into the month prior or the month following, should I say. But the interesting thing is, is that we do have the um, 8.5 anniversary happening in the middle of November. So potentially this might just be a little bit of a, of a Philosugo Fest right before the 8.5 anniversary. It's really hard to predict what the hell's going on. But we do have the information for the Law and Corazon character. So we have some brief information here, but I do feel like it is a little bit easier to read the in-game information here. So let's go ahead and uh, and zoom in here on, on what we have. So first of all, let's actually just go ahead and read the character stuff here. So it is a, an, it's an int character, int cerebral free spirit. So good class and type combinations. And it is a super class character for the super class cerebral. So again, another int cerebral character that is also super class, which is, a little bit weird. I don't like the fact that it's another int super cerebral because cerebral had so much support recently. I feel like they really should have knuckled down on another class, but I digress. Let's go ahead and read what this character does. So the captain ability is going to reduce cooldown by one at the start of the quest. It then boosts int and cerebral characters by 5.25 when you have empty slots five times otherwise boost their health by 1.3 and reduce 10 turns of despair i mean captain ability wise it's great you just get health cooldown attack multiplier and a utility effect like there's really not much wrong with this captain ability it's super solid and just due to the utility effect alone is going to see a lot of play then you've got their special ability, boosting cerebral characters attack by 2.75 for one turn, changes crew slots into empty, and makes the crew land on empty slots for three turns, including the enemy slot changes. That's really weird. So essentially, like, uh, the way that I think that this is worded is essentially when you move into, like, a new stage or a new turn, the enemy does their effects, which can shuffle your slots around, and then after that occurs, there'll be, like, some kind of buff that will just automatically shuffle all your slots into empty. It doesn't specifically say block slots though, so I'd be interested to see if it gets around that. But one thing that comes into mind straight away is Nami and Robin dual unit, because their switch ability removes any slot that you have, no matter what it is, even super block slots. It gets rid of anything, and it makes them empty. So I feel like this could have some kind of really cool synergy. Nami and Robin are also a cerebral character. They also can potentially be int, so there's some good overlap there. So you get the attack boost, you get empty slots, and then empty slots for the next three turns, and then changes the attack multiplier of empty slots to 2.25 times, normally 1.0 for three turns. So that's what it's saying here, is that normally if you have an empty slot, it's treating it as like a neutral slot, which is one times multiplier. So instead of it being a one times multiplier, instead it's going to be a 2.25 times multiplier. So it's it's not as it's it's not as good as a Wano slot, which is a 2.5, but it's 
better than a matching slot, which is a two times multiplier. So it also begs the question is how does orb boosts work with this? I assume it's going to be working kind of like what it would be normally because, you know, if you use an orb boost and you have an empty slot, it's a one times multiplier. So you don't get any boost from an orb boost. But instead of it being one times, it makes a 2.25 instead. So I assume that this does multiply with orb boosting effects. So I am going to be very, very intrigued to see how that kind of works. But in theory, this does work pretty effectively. And that also lasts for three turns. So essentially for three turns, you get like a full board of matching slots. Um, or it's like a full board of like pseudo wano slots, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's a lot of attack multiply that you can get, plus an attack boost and stuff. This is all looking really good so far. Crewmate ability, boosting base stats by 75, reducing 10 turns of blindness as a crewmate. That's a really cool effect. You don't see that too often. Also, something I'm just noticing, 11 turn cooldown is ridiculous for a special such as that. Um, then you get the support effect attaching to any int cerebral character, which there are a lot of. Once per quest, if the enemy changes your slots, you change crew slots to empty at the start of the next turn. I don't really know in what type of situation this effect is going to be useful, but... Uh, I guess it's intriguing nonetheless. I don't think this support effect is very good unless if like, you know, you get some type of other special that you can abuse that can take full effect of the fact that you have empty slots, like a, a character that can change your empty slots into something else rather than you having, you know, badly matching slots, for example. I don't know. Th this type of effect is pretty weird. I'm not really a big fan of that in particular. But then, of course, we have the super class special and it will activate when the character themselves has an empty slot or you have five or more cerebral characters on the crew which is pretty easy condition to activate considering the character special and then the effect will heal the crew by 25 percent that allows you to overheal which is good and reducing three turns of attack down and paralysis that's actually really good. This character is going to be very nice to have in like a Kizuna, for example, where sometimes those gimmicks go past that five turn threshold for some of the specials. So this is just enabling you to remove some more of that. If you run double of this unit, you can get access to, you know, uh, six turn removal of attack down and paralysis. But the thing is, is this character's special ability kind of doesn't have that reduced redundancy that a lot of other Sugofest exclusives have had recently, where this character just says, you know, attack boost and then the empty slots and stuff. But, you know, characters these days will have like, you know, maybe it's an attack boost, but if you already have an attack boost, you either give a different buff or you buff the attack boost that you already have. So it is a little bit annoying the character doesn't have reduced redundancy in that fashion, but I think that this uh, super class effect is actually very, very good. So I think overall, this is a good character, but the... It really does beg the question is is this character really worth pulling for and considering the fact that we are very close to not only eight, the 8.5 anniversary but also very close to new year's celebrations i think it might be a wise idea for many people out there to probably just skip this character altogether but i know that many people out there are going to be excited for a character like this and this character is not going to be available for that long um but i assume this is going to be just a normal legend that's going to be available in pretty much every banner or red ticket moving forward kind of similar to how sanji and zoro during the one piece day celebration they were out for a very weird amount of time and then they just got put into regular tickets this character is probably going to be doing the same thing so that's the regular abilities and then we've got the pirate rumble stuff now the pirate rumble stuff does kind of piss me off a little bit because so many characters recently have been coming out that are sugo fest exclusives are also cerebral and all of these really powerful cerebral rumble units it's really hard to fit them all on a team because they're all legends what we really do need though is we need support in terms of rumble abilities uh, rumble rare recruits the characters such as that would be very very nice to have but i digress let's go ahead and break down this character's abilities so in rumble they're going to provide cerebral buffs speed and recovery level six and if the HP of this character is 50% or below, then it gives level 6 attack and 6 crit to all characters. Um, that's actually very good, and that can be used in a lot of different teams, but he has to be below 50%, which is kind of annoying. But then you've got the special, which is a 22 CT, which is very, very low, and it targets your cerebral teammates for level 7 attack, level 7 speed, and level 7 defense, or level 5 defense. Uh, all of those are for 15 seconds. And then if you launch the special and he is above 50%, he targets 4 enemies for 75% chance to halve their stats. 
for 10 seconds. So that's a pretty unique effect to have as well. More halving of stats is obviously very powerful. And I think this is probably going to help out Cerebral a lot more than a character such as Hina that came out recently, because the Cerebral characters still kind of lack a bit of damage, and having a character such as this on a really low CT being able to halve their stats, I think is very nice. And it allows characters such as Super Sugo Shanks, or Super Sugo Uta, or even Carrot and Wanda for example, to make their damage hit even harder. Being able to halve their stats, having your offensive characters hit a lot harder, I think is probably going to be a bit more valuable compared to a character such as Hina, which can just kind of stop the enemies with action bind. I think halving their stats is going to provide a little bit more. Plus, not only that, he does guarantee you to get some really nice, not only offensive, but defensive buffs as well. So I think that this character is probably going to see a lot of play in Rumble if people are opting to use cerebral based teams, that is. But that's all of the information that we have right now and it does look like according to all reports it is going to be a solo sugo fest just with law and corazon with no rare recruits or any additional sugo fest exclusive so that is kind of interesting as well i wonder what kind of sugo fest we're going to get potentially it's going to be purely halloween themed where they're going to be mainly boosting you know halloween perona or hancock or halloween ace Halloween Shanks, Mihawk, and Law characters such as that. Um, maybe they'll maybe they'll throw in Halloween Koala in this Sugo Fest as well. Despite the fact that she's a treasure map legend, I definitely could see them doing that. Just due to this, due to the fact that you know this is a Halloween themed celebration. But that's gonna wrap it up for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the Law and Corazon down below in the comment section. Really hope you guys did go on to enjoy this video today. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.